my name is Rhapsody, and welcome to Aratus, Lord of the Dead. Aratus, Lord of the Dead is a turn-based tactical RPG in a completely different fashion to how you might typically understand those words. I'll just turn this down for just a moment as I'm doing the intro. Uh, it's similar to Darkest Dungeon, if you've seen that, or the title, where I imagine I would have made the comparison as well. Incredibly similar to Darkest Dungeon mechanically. However, thematically, you are playing the evil enemies rather than the heroes. And because of that, you're going to have to have the ability to get some of them back, right? You're going to have to have dispensable characters because the heroes have got to win a couple of times. So it's a good thing that you play as Aratus, the Lord of the Dead, Necromancer. When you beat enemies, you loot from them body parts that you use to create your new hordes to go back into battle. So you can see, uh, I have played <coughs> a fair bit of this game in order to get ready for this series. I am so excited. So damn excited to play this game. I have not stopped talking about this game ever since I downloaded it after I got the key. It is so good. So... I'm not going to go for tutorial or cakewalk. I'm going to start on more pain. However, if you are not familiar with Darkest Dungeon and the mechanics therein, or indeed not familiar with this game, I'm going to be doing a little bit more tutorialization in the first episode, and then afterwards I'll move into just straight gameplay. So, this is the base screen that you will see very, very commonly. There's Aratus, and that's us. Uh, over here on the left, we have talents. Aratus can earn experience points and then you can turn those into just buffs for erratas some of them passive things like increases the chance of receiving parts parts of what you use to create your horde uh, at the end of battle by 10 percent or they can be things like spells errata steals 12 to 16 physical damage to each enemy at number one and two positions for 11 mana every tier of these upgrades the cost that you need to spend on them so this only costs one skill point this costs two this costs three this costs four as you might imagine Right, next up, alchemy. So these are all of the parts. You use those to build creatures. However, if I wanted to join two armor together, I would get a higher level of armor, an uncommon armor. Then two uncommons makes a rare, two rares makes a legendary. When you upgrade them, they have increased stats. And if you use that equipment, an upgraded piece of an equipment, in order to create part of your squad then that squad is going to have that extra stats it's kind of like uh armor armor and weaponry this is very similar to so here we can see all of the characters that i currently have unlocked the skeleton zombie bride of Aratus, dark knight banshee wraith mummy lich headhunter shade and lost soul there's also a vampire blood phantasm bone golem fallen dampier and ghoul now, the enemies take HP damage, but they can also take stress damage, similar to in Darkest Dungeon. And that stress damage can turn them insane, or it can turn them inspired, but it can also kill them. So you have two different ways that you may want to combat an enemy. You may want to just fight them straight up, just hit them, or you might want to make them really, really sad until they have a heart attack and die. So because I am about to craft my opening party, I'm going to decide effectively which of those I want. I'm going to go with a Dark Knight to lead up my team, a manifestation of living void contained in a vessel of knightly armor. These necromantic soldiers are often seen leading the armies of undead against the civilizations of mortals. Where they learn the skill to do battle and wage war is unknown, but all of them seem to despise existence and seek to reduce everything to nothing so i'll just throw a bit of basic equipment in there next up i'm gonna make myself a banshee a banshee draws her strength from one simple th emotion fear in truth a banshee feels many times the fear felt by her victims had she the ability, she would run away from each battle in blind terror but necromancers had long since employed additional bindings to keep that from happening Fill all of that up and get ourselves a Banshee. You go in the next position. 
Then after that, I'm going to take a lost soul. A lost soul is a spirit that has been trapped on the mortal plane for so long that they have forgotten what they looked like when they were still alive. This can be accelerated with some brainwashing. Such souls can then be infused with necromantic energy and used as agents of deception. Taught to delight in lies and betrayal, these spirits take on the form of masked women that trick and lure mortals to their doom. And the final that I am going to craft here is a Bride of Aratus, a fashion designed by the Arc Necromancer himself, or rather a design fashioned by the Arc Necromancer himself. A bride uses only the best part to raise a deadly archer with an unhealthy love of her creator. Said love is then channeled into a burning desire to shoot out the eyes of anything that might try and get close to the one she worships. All right, I will now pop the master volume back up. And now it's much more reasonable. Yeah, it was just in the main screen that was a little bit loud. Okay, so we've used the creation screen in order to create our squad. I'll describe the squad in just a little bit, but we'll have a look at the final thing remaining, artifacts. So Aratus can wear multiple different artifacts and here is a consumable slot that'll consume itself each battle that you use. Uh, Nobleman's Garb. Aratus gains 20% more parts after battle if four minions, uh, minions were at level 3 or higher. So our characters are called minions, obviously. Usually minions means the enemies and heroes means your characters. Inverse is true here. Well, even more than previous. Hook. 15% less likely to escape on our enemies. So escaping is something that happens if the enemies get stressed out enough and are influenced in certain directions. Uh, I'm fine with my enemies escaping, so I'm not going to use the hook. Cool. So that's a base level of this screen that we've gone through. Let's also have a look at the graveyard. The graveyard is effectively kind of our hamlet, if you're familiar with Darkest Dungeon. If you're not, then these are the boons that we can gain out of battle while we're in battle, right? So they're passive benefits that we can achieve. So library is... The building requirement means that I need to put a Dark Knight here as well as pay 20. So you can see the resource for this is Architect's Souls. I have 20 and need 20. Each minion studying the ancient books gives Aratus plus 40 experience. So there's a fair few of these around here. One of them's already built, the Mortuary, and this is effectively a way to heal outside of battle. You can upgrade the amount of slots the building can hold and how effective, therefore, it can be by just slotting another minion in, paying the cost, and then you unlock that extra slot. It's pretty straightforward. However, the... One that I am going to want to get is Excavation. And the reason for that is because this is each minion explores the ancient burial ground and they find a random part. Each battle, I just get an extra part. And I am going to need those because I'm going to need minions to throw out on the battlefield, minions to replace the minions that die, minions to stock all of these, minions to upgrade each and every one of these. Like, I need minions. So let's go quickly create ourselves a skeleton. Bones, bones, bones. Just so uninspired, you know. Mmm, just uninspired. I do know, I do know. How so are these bodies wind up here, I wonder. Was there an effort to set me free sometime in the past? Regardless, these remains will be used as fuel for my growing arm. All right, so I'm going to try and not interrupt the announcer at least as often as I possibly can. Uh, because, again, similar to Darkest Dungeon, the narrator does a lot of flavor for the entire setting. Oh, it's real good. Uh, is there any ability for me to actually watch the intro cutscene again? I'm pretty sure... Maybe? Can I? Start game options credits? No. All right, doesn't look like I can watch the intro cutscene again. My apologies. The intro cutscene effectively just describes that you were on the brink of taking over the world, but someone managed to kill you, Aratus. Uh, and now you're effectively trying to re corral your forces to have another go at ending the world. Okay. The final thing that we need to talk about before we actually go into the battle level is the characters. So the characters each have a set of six abilities. I think there is one with seven, but we'll talk about that at the time if it happens to come up. Uh, 
it, it's pretty much exactly as you might expect. Physical attack, it deals 50% of your... So when it says sword 50%, it's 50% of my attack stat. And then there's the dread stat. So dread shows stress attacks and attack is for physical and magical attacks. Uh, and then it just has additional effect underwards. Obvious, right? The thing that you might not know if you aren't familiar with Darkest Dungeon is that the... So it's not a top-down, like it's not an isometric turn-based RPG. It's straight across, it's 2D. So your ordering of your party is from front to back. So here I have my Dark Knight in the front of the party and I have my Bride of Aratus in the back of the party. Your enemy does the same, inverted obviously because they're on the opposite side of the screen. So here you can see that I'm only capable as the Dark Knight of using Heartless Slash if I'm in one of the first two slots. So that's what the two grayed out skulls, two yellow skulls mean. It means I can't use this attack if I'm in the back two slots. I can use it if I'm in the front two. And then the red skulls show, or rather the red helmets for the adventurers, show where I can target. So this can only be used from the front two and can only target the back two. This can only be used from the front three, target the back three. Exactly as you might imagine. There's also a thing called a stance, which is effectively a readied action. You ready an action, and then it triggers at some specific predefined trigger. This one is every time an enemy receives a buff. So that's just another kind of turn that you can have. And then finally, I promise we're about to go into battle. Finally, there's the ultimate ability. The ultimate ability is cost wrath, which is an extra mechanic that you get building over the course of a fight. And Aratus will channel his wrath through a character, allowing them to use their ultimate ability. Their ultimate ability is pretty strong. All right. I think that's everything that we need to describe. Like, it looks a lot more daunting on the outset than it actually is. So let's go to the dungeon. The kingdom has need of vast riches buried underneath the castle. Great veins of iron that promise to fuel conquest after conquest, along with ancient artifacts from a long forgotten age. The dwarves were eager to offer their services in this project, bringing their untested mining equipment and experimental concoctions for the promise of wealth. They only needed bodies they could obey, and that the humans could provide. With dungeons filled to the brim with both criminals and rebels, there was no shortage of slaves to work these mines. Drugs used to keep them docile as they dug ever deeper, year after year, unaware of the mortal danger that awaited them below. If that sounds familiar, oh, oh, it better. It's, uh, it's clearly a direct homage to Darkest Dungeon, which begins with swerthy, walkman, uh, swerthy workmen and their shovels digging too deep and unleashing an antediluvian evil upon the world. So here we can see our dungeon layout, right? This is just a standard battle ahead of us, ancient coffin, stale. Uh, we'll talk to those when we get to the actual points. So let's actually go into a battle. All right, so up here you can see the turn order. You can see that I get my Bride of Aratus first and then Lost Soul, then the enemy's conscripts attack and then I get mine back. Neat. So, the Bride of Aratus here, uh, I, just, the first time I use any new character, I will describe all of their abilities. After that, read the tooltips. Like, I, I can't just permanently be describing things. So, we have Chest Piercer, a physical attack that deals 80% of our attack, and a crit deals 200 instead. Can target anywhere. Flames of Love, this is Ignition. So, Ignition is effectively, it's, it's, it's a DOT, right? damage over time uh then there's overwatch this is a stance where if the enemies move i immediately damage them and the stance does not end the first time that triggers then there's think of him the bride gains plus four attack and plus four dread until the battle ends so it's effectively like a, a battle wide buff uh warning shot this can target any line moves the enemy back one so that's what you see in the four red uh, four red helmets and then the push one and it moves us backwards three. So if I wasn't in the final slot, I'd definitely be moved here. And then after that, we have Rose for a Lady. This specifically inflicts a critical hit when it triggers and hits all targets. Neat. I'm gonna throw a warning shot out there on the frontliner. Okay. Lost Soul now has Inspire Heroics. Stress attack, it deals 80% of her dread to a target and the enemy standing behind it, but it also buffs the enemies. 
by 10 accuracy until battle ends. Benevolent Spirit, it heals a target, but then it also damages them at the start of the Lost Souls next turn. Uh, the Misleading Beauty can only be used in the front line. It is a giant magic attack, but it buffs the target for the rest of the battle. Then there's Stream of Delusion. Hits all enemy targets, but also buffs them all. It's a stress attack. Uh, Dubious Boon. You can give plus two wards to a target. A ward just prevents a magical source of damage, right? So it's like a, it's like a single shield in another game or something like that. And then Sudden Reality is the buff. Uh, sorry, the ultimate removes all buffs and debuffs from enemies, and you all gain plus one damage until the battle ends for each buff or debuff removed that way. All right, next up. Uh, can I even... Okay, I can't even look at her yet. Okay, sweet. Uh, let's go with Inspire Heroics. So I buffed their initiative. Their initiative effectively is just going to sort them into this stuff up here. Uh, so you can see, I just got crit, and the enemy's stress healed on all of their characters. Similar mechanics that work in Darkest Dungeon in terms of, like, if you crit the enemies, or rather, imagine we're the enemies, right? So if the enemies crit you in Darkest Dungeon, all of your companions lose, stre uh, lose sanity. They are stressed. Uh, or if you crit the enemies, all of your companions have the ability to gain stress uh, or regain sanity, lose stress. Uh, in this, those mechanics hold. Now you can see the point of my party, by the way. Feudal hopes, each time an enemy receives a buff, the Dark Knight deals 60% stress to it. Some of you will have already spotted the benefit and the bonus that I'm going for here. Uh, oh, I didn't go through the Dark Knight's abilities. Never mind, I'll do that in a moment. Banshee. So this moves you one forward, can target anyone. Uh, it moves the target to a random position, but it also deals 75% damage. Yeah, it's fine. No, can only be removed in the uh, in the complete backspace. Whenever an enemy moves, the Banshee deals 60% stress damage to it. Absorb fear, move backwards three, can only be used in the first three, targets anyone. Restores the target to full sanity. So if you've driven them insane by that point, you can use this. Uh, and also heals Aratus's mana by 30% of the restored sanity. I'm not currently using Aratus's mana at all, so not necessary. Uh, Whale, all allies gain plus six dread for their next action. It doesn't stack. Soprano, and that is just AoE stress, but it also debuffs our enemy's attack. And then finally, Howl, a magical attack that targets the front two lines, and they both skip their turn. I'll use Soprano here. Beautiful. So we can see that's actually gotten an enemy to the point that they are now insane. And that insane... One sec. That insanity has given them the debuff. Oh god, so many crits. Has given them the debuff cowardice. The chance for them to flee the battle increases by 20% each turn. At the start of their turn, they deal stress damage to all allies equal to 20% of their current remaining sanity. So they're going to have none, ideally. Uh, okay. Move you backwards. So now Lost Soul is about to buff all of the enemies on the field. All of them? No, I'll just use Inspire Heroics on the front two liners. But this will buff each of them, which will cause the Dread Knight in the stance to actually use his ability. So the Dread Knight is now unlocked their ultimate ability, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. Heartless Slash deals 50% damage to a target, but it also deals increased damage for every point of armor and resistance you have, up to 50% of the sum total of those. Uh, Hollow Star, just straight up stress damage to a target. If they have buffs or debuffs, they get extra stressed. Then there's Dark Tithe, removes all debuffs from the Dark Knight, and Aratus gains mana. Uh, Feudal Hopes, each time an enemy receives a buff, deal your stress damage to it, or well, 60% of your stress damage to it. This is what we're going to be primarily using on the Dark Knight there. Then there's also Unfeeling Aggression. This is if you're in the back line and need to reposition to the front line. So if you're in the back, it moves you forward three, so you definitely get to the front. And it deals 100% damage to a chosen target and the target standing behind it. So I could actually use that to open a battle a lot of the time. Uh, Abyssal Hunger, all enemies lose 12 Vigor. Vigor is HP. Dark Knight restores Vigor in the amount received by the enemies. So there's not that much healing in this game that I've encountered. There's a little bit, but not that much. So for that reason, abilities that heal are so valuable as far as I'm concerned. All right. 
go for Feudal Hopes again. Right, I just really want them to stop hitting the Banshee here. Giant hit there. Losing a lot of HP on the targets there. I really don't want to lose HP on. So now that each of these... Uh, actually, this target isn't even on zero sanity. You've got one. But when a target on zero sanity is affected by a stress attack, they have a chance to have a heart attack, and that just kills them. As well as deal stress to all of the rest of the targets on the field. Mm -hmm. Hey, there we go. There's our first heart attack. And you can see that heart attack then caused everyone else to take stress, but didn't necessarily kill them, unfortunately. All right. I'm going to use the magic attack here just because I don't want the frontliner to take their turn. I'll also heal up a little bit because I figure these enemies are going to be off the field pretty quickly. Great. Now, if you move an enemy that's in a stance, if you move them directly then on the sec as i try and get a kill oh that's a hard attack not on the second one though unfortunately Ooh, missed there that's really bad all right don't don't have a good turn please Ooh. yikes they healed up stress as a result of that as well oh this is all going kind of south It was a point I was trying to make before that happened. Oh, what? I def... Oh, I hit two instead of W. So the enemy wants to escape at this point, and they will escape at the start of the next turn. I don't know if you get less rewards if they escape or something like that. Okay, so we can see here the amount of damage each of our characters took. Architect souls, ectoplasm, so we got two ectoplasm, these are just parts. Bones, armor, and a skull. Neat. And the graveyard event gave us a rare bones. The rare bones are plus five to accuracy and plus one to initiative. Very, very neat. Okay. So the Banshee has taken a lot of damage here. I don't necessarily want you to go back out in the fields on that amount of HP. The Bride of Aratus, I also actually kind of don't want to go back out in the fields on that amount of HP, but, you know, I might just have to accept it. Uh, I don't have enough Architect Souls to build anything else here, so there's no extra level of management I need to worry about. Pretty sure we have the ability to just leap back into a battle as soon as we create something that seems kind of useful here. I could make a Skeleton, but the Skeleton doesn't actually have stress attacks until... Embrace mediocrity, but you lose 30% of your vigor in order to do that. And that doesn't just heal at the end of the combat. So you need to find a way to heal that. It's not a great stress damage dealer. At least at the start, in my opinion. Uh, and Shield Banger is the other stress attack that is relevant with the, sh uh, the skeleton. It's relatively cheap as far as Wrath abilities go. It's only 35 out of a possible 100. And it is really effective. That said, I probably want to have a look at some of the other characters that we might be able to pick up here instead. The Wraith. Okay, this actually gives us the ability to talk about Curse. So Curse in this game is effectively a damage over time, but for stress. So let's call it a, a SOT. It's stress over time. Perfection takes time. All right. I'm not going to look at necessarily all of the rest of those. I've just got to figure out who is most viable for my party at this point in time. Uh, it could even just be another Banshee. It may actually even be another Banshee. Banshees are pretty good for our party. Banshees can be pretty good for our party. Uh, okay, Banshees are slower than the Bar uh, Brides of Aratus. Also, by the way, in this game, you have the ability to name your characters. I haven't currently got the names from Patron pulled up. But the people who are on the fourth wall tier are going to have their names inserted into this game. I'm not necessarily going to take care of that in the first episode just because there's a lot of tutorialization already going on and I don't want to overload the episode with a bunch of things that aren't necessarily gameplay. I say as I do things that aren't necessarily gameplay. You know what? I actually will make a skeleton, although I'm not going to use the upgraded bones. Yeah, I'll sub that out. 
I don't want to use the upgraded bones just because plus five accuracy and plus one initiative is pretty good. And I don't want to waste it on a minion that I intend not to use. Humans become much sturdier when you strip them of their vital organs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have two directions. Each of them is an ancient coffin filled with items. However, if you go in a direction, it just grays out the entire other path. So we should have a look at the future path to figure out which we want to do. I have the ability to go for two fights before I get to a Fountain of Restoration. That will heal all of my minions, so that can be super useful. There's also a quest along this line. Um, yeah, this looks like the more interesting path, I think. So we select a boon out of these. Soul Gem gives plus three dread. So these can be equipped to a character. They're kind of like trinkets, relics, right? Uh, debuffing a target. So this, the trigger effect is on the bottom. So if you debuff a target, you will gain plus six accuracy for three turns. And that can stack up to three times. Uh, Golden Tooth. If you start a turn with less than 30% vigor, you have a 100% chance to deal critical damage for an action. That'd be good in an aggressive build. Blood Diamond, uh, plus one block, and if you start your start, so if you start your turn on the fourth position, you gain plus three luck up to three times. Wild. So luck is your crit stat. We'll actually go over stats in just a moment as well. I may want to go for the Soul Gem though. Debuffing a target, plus three dread. I mean, that's that's perfect for the Banshee. Because the Banshee debuffs all enemy targets at the same time and uses Dread in order to deal her damage. Alright. So let's quickly just go over the stats. We've got Attack, exactly as you might expect. Dread, how much damage you deal with uh, stress attacks. Accuracy, likelihood of hitting a target. Accuracy over 100% increases your chance of dealing, uh, of hitting targets with evasion. Uh, evasion, implied by the previous stat. Luck shows the likelihood of a critical hit. Now, if your enemy has negative luck, you get extra luck, effectively. So if they're on negative 34, it's as though your character has 34 luck. Vigards, HP. Uh, armor, exactly what you might imagine. It blocks, it's a straight reduction, right? So it's reduced by the amount of armor that you have rather than the percentage. So it's not EHP, it's kind of like, well, it kind of is EHP. Uh, resistance, that, but for magical stuff. Uh, block just completely nullifies a physical attack. Uh, and that attack is nullified and the character's block amount is reduced by one. Yep. Ward, same for magical sources and initiative is your speed. It's all really, really straightforward. As much as like when you pull up a screen like this, it looks like the game is overwhelming. It, I promise you, it's, it's super isn't. And it's so good. I, my partner has not been able to get me to shut up about this game over the last, I want to say, Five? Five days? I've played 36 hours of this game over the last five days. I am so glad I can finally actually play it on the channel as well. Oh, ugh. Oh. I'm going to be geeking out over this game for a really long period of time. Uh, also, you can just ask any of the people that I've ever worked with on YouTube as well. Has Ryan just been losing his absolute mind about this game? Yeah, constantly. All right, I'm just going to stress more. Wee bit of a buff to them all. It's fine. Stance Dennis to strike, so probably want to move you out of position. So the warning shot moves the target back. And in having done so, you move backwards and you lose your stance. So effectively, the enemy just like forfeited their whole turn there. There was nothing there. I feel nothing. I don't like that my tank is taking so much damage. So our... Mm, okay. So I have the ability to use Shield Banger right now, but I'm not going to. Uh, the reason I'm not going to is because I want the Dark Knight to use their stress ability. Okay. I'm going to gain a stance that is effectively enemies attack us more often, but I have plus six armor and plus six resistance. Neat. So I knew that the other enemy was going to attack, so I was going to get more wrath, and now I have the ability to abyssal hunger my enemies. So that's, that's why I took those actions in that order, just so that I could get this full heal. The skeleton is effectively just here to taunt, right? It's it's a soft taunt. Enemies are more likely to attack that target, but not guaranteed. It's a shame we haven't got the Dread Knight stance up yet. Dread Knight, Dark Knight, sorry. 
Don't worry, we're not going to be calling him that for long. Okay. Crit debuff. Neat. Um, yeah, I should just get one target off the field as quickly as possible. Action economy is incredibly important here. Oh, I'm so glad to... Ah. Hmm. Just... Hmm. Good game. Ooh, completely absorbed that with my armor as well. Now I actually get to do the AoE and then the AoE buff and then the AoE stance hit. Oh, so... It's so rewarding to also, like, have your enemies have a... a chain of deaths from heart attacks. Because anyone who's played Darkest Dungeon will know that feeling intensely. Oh, good stress. Uh, I think I just have to try and stress one of these targets that's about to act. So we can see this is a target that's about to act. This one isn't because they're not highlighted. Damn. Just hoping to get a kill on them before they actually took their round. Very good for the old action economy, that one. Yeah, there's a little bit of swearing in this game. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to repeat it, but it is in the text. Yell at him! He has one heart attack. Does that lead to another? No, it doesn't. Sadly. One heart attack. Does that lead to another? It doesn't. That's fine because I do want to use Abyssal Hunger before we end the fight. And then end the fight. Hey! It works out in the end. My will. All right, so we can see the graveyard events that have happened while we we're away. We got a skull, and the Banshee is healed back up. I'm pretty sure it just heals you up to full, regardless of what you're on. Uh, mm, so I can't actually unlock the extra part of that. Hmm, okay. So I need more Architect Souls, clearly, so that I can start working on that graveyard. So I am going to create a Banshee. Sorry, a, I'm going to create a Wraith. Probably because of all of that putrefaction, my dudes. Comes with the power of souls drawn towards it. Many ancient monuments were built for exactly this purpose. Wait, wait. I only need to do one more fight before I can get a full heal on all my characters. Hmm. I think I might go out with this squad again. I'm a little scared about it though. All right, so over here in Alchemy, Amateur Surgeon increases the chance of receiving parts at the end of battle by 10%. Love it. And increases the chance of finding artifacts at the end of battle by 20%. I think I'm actually going to go for Appreciator of Architecture instead. Increases the chance of receiving souls of the Architect at the end of a battle by 25%. The formulae reveal their secrets. My goal here is effectively just to set up my economy, uh, economy super quickly. So there's a full line down here that just increases the amount of parts that you get. Uh, that's probably going to be the first line that I complete. Uh, I should probably also unlock a spell so that my mana is not just hanging around doing absolutely nothing for us. This is a consumable. At the beginning of combat, all enemies lose 20 to 30 vigor and it ignores ward one time use. Uh, that said, I'm not physically fighting my enemies at the moment, so I don't know if that's necessarily good for me. So every time you level up, up until level 7 obviously, you have the ability to modify one of your abilities. So Heartless Slash, I can either deal extra damage up front. So this is 50% extra damage, 50% uh, damage up front versus 75% damage up front. Or I can have it deal more of a percentage of my armor and of my resistance. It's also worth noting, based on which of those you choose, you increase your stats a little bit. So I can increase my attack a little bit in this direction or my defense a little bit in this direction. I'm going to go for the defense uh, and get death comes for everyone here. Actually, no, the Dark Knight is currently doing a lot of my stress damage because of the stance. So I may want to upgrade the stance. So Hollow, uh, it's not Hollow Stare, Futile Hopes down here. So this increases the amount of damage it does, but it also increases my Dread. And my Dread, you can see here, also increases the amount of damage that my stress does, right? So this is like a double upgrade in the direction that I hope for. Strengthen the flesh, blacken the spirit. 
Okay. All right, th this increases the damage that we do with Hero Mania there. Uh, although I'm mainly using my AoE, so let's have a look at that. Yeah, Psychotic Scream. This does a... Yeah, a little bit more damage, but it gives them extra two initiative until battle ends. However, it also gives me three dread, and that's what well, I'm doing. My minion. Okay, so the Bride of Aratus has the ability to go for this upgrade. Adore him upgrades from plus four attack and plus four dread until battle end to plus six and plus six. But we also get plus attack and plus dread by taking that. Hmm... It really depends what I want to do with this character. Because I don't know if I actually want the Bride of Aratus to be a stress-dealing character. I kind of just have her right now because she's quite good. There is also uh, one thing that I do want to address about this game. Uh, is the character design? Uh, like, it, it's incredibly uh, it's it, incredibly well designed. Uh, as in visually. Uh, the aesthetic is down. The art is down. Um, I'm... Not a super huge fan of the fact that every single female character is uh, is specifically drawn overtly sexually. Like, Skeleton, male character. Implied. Uh, Dread Dark Knight, male character. Again, implied. Lost Soul. Bride of Aratus. Notice any similarities between the characters that I'm pulling up? Wraith. Hang on, Banshee. One sec. A little bit, you know, just maybe, maybe not every female character has to be super buxom and, uh, and wearing a low cut top. Just, just not necessarily incredible direction in character design right there. It's the one, one slightly bad thing that I have to say about this game so far. Which says a lot, but still, bruh. Um, yeah, I may upgrade a door here, but also I have the possibility of going for extra luck on other trees. I should actually probably just upgrade get away from him, right? Because it's the ability I'm using primarily here. So I can upgrade it so that it is extra chance to escape on a target or to interrupt their stances and make them unable to move during their next turn. It already interrupts their stances unless they are the final target or uh, the target at the end of the line. So that includes final target, I guess. Uh, so I don't necessarily think it needs that upgrade. I'll take the luck. My enemies are in for a nasty surprise. Okay. Time to go to a quest. As you progress upon your journey toward your rightful dominance, you encounter an impressing, uh, impressive mustering of resistance. A massive shambling of feet, and your undead host comes across an even larger host of human slaves. A single dwarf taskmaster is at the head, grinning with darkened teeth as he whips his thralls against you. For the first time in a long time, you realize you're outnumbered. Attack them no matter how bleed the odds, retreat, or let a skeleton assassinate the dwarf. Requires the skeleton. Skeletons are very good at playing dead. All right, let's try that. I'll take it as tribute. This situation calls for a subtle approach. Hidden behind your other minions, a skeleton pulls pulls back in the direction you came from and lays on the ground, pretending to be dead. Then, just as the slaves charge in order or retreat, slaves charge you order or retreat, and the dwarves follow in order to lead his horde. To his surprise, the simple skeleton at his feet suddenly stirs and impales him through the chest. The other slaves panic, and without their master, scatter round rapidly rather in every direction, making them easy pickings for your minions. So we get just a little bit of hearts going on there. Neat. All right, time for our next fight. Mmm, this could actually be a rough one. So this is another thing. Uh, traps are a certain kind of attack, and they will affect anyone that is in that position. So obviously, at this point, no one should move, ideally. The Taskmaster also has a feature down here. Whenever the Taskmaster dies, his allies recover 30 sanity. So either I want the Taskmaster to die first before I make anyone else insane, or last. I'm going to go for last. I'm going to start going for the Elite Hunky here. Oh, that's really bad. I really need my accuracy. They just crit debuffed me. I have negative 30 accuracy right now. That's real bad. Uh, use your taunt. 
You've got to go for dash topes, definitely. That's the stance, especially because the lost soul is about to come up. Yeah. Psychic scream them all. Three of them got buffed. I actually managed to hit all three. Hell yeah. Ooh, that target already wants to escape. That's really good for us. That is super good. Oh, man. My accuracy is... It's got to be negative 60 right now. It's two stacks of negative 30. Yeah, I'm going to miss all of those, unfortunately. Stress them all out. Three of them have now turned insane. Beautiful. And the insanity has caused one of them to betray. So there's different ways that a target can become insane. Similar to in Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I, I'll stop mentioning, mentioning Darkest Dungeon soon. Uh, this one has become unlucky. Negative accuracy, negative evasion, negative luck. This one is going to betray. 75% chance to attack allies. Uh, this one is hopeless. Has zero luck. No armor and no block. No block and no ward. Uh, and 50% negative to their attack stat as well. Yeah, Dark Knight's accuracy is complete garbage right now. But that said, this is still our game plan. Oh! Ooh, I still hit most of them. Imagine my surprise. Oh, that's another buff as well. Great. So one of them just straight up disappears on its turn. One of them skips its turn. Ah, unfortunately I've been stunned there, so I've lost my uh, my stance. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of a uh, lot of stress on our enemies. I'm really hoping some of them have heart attacks. Heart attack, please. That is really bad for us. I'm about to lose a lot of HP. I may actually end up losing a target as well, which is really annoying because I intended to just wait until I got the full heal on all of my own. That seemed like a great idea at the time. All right. Skeleton to a taunt here. Hopefully that helps. Psychotic scream, please. Oh, double heart attack. Yes. All right. Now it is just how much damage can I deal to the taskmaster right now? Oh, giant debuffs. Yeah, a little bit of a whip. Nothing to be scared of, though. Taskmaster, and now you're completely out of sanity. Pop that taunt again. My goal, effectively, is just roll stress attacks until there is no more Taskmaster ahead of me. And it has worked out perfectly. A predictable outcome, indeed, Aratus. All right. To end out this episode, I'm going to go to the Fountain of Restoration and show that off. I can either restore Aratus's mana or heal all of my minions to full vigor. Let's go for that one because I was, you know, planning around it the entire time. Skeleton also has the ability to upgrade an ability here. Uh, the Skeleton's ability to upgrade Astounding Fortitude is really important because one of the upgrades is strikes back when attacked, dealing 75% of the stress damage. Now, prove yourself worthy of my investment. That actually feels like a really solid investment. I think maybe, like, I replaced the Bride of Aratus with the, the Banshee that we lost a little bit earlier. And then I think this is kind of like a really, really good party. Like, I've got tanking up in the front. I've got the ability to benefit twice from Lost Souls abilities because of the Dark Knight's stance. The Banshee actually has the ability to trigger no. And in doing so, the Lost Souls first ability, Inspire Heroics, which pulls two enemies, two spaces each, becomes super effective, right? It buffs those enemies, so Dark Knight triggers his stance, and it moves them, so Banshee triggers hers. This is going to be a great time. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Aratus, Lord of the Dead. There is a playlist in the description down below with all of my content on this game, present and future. This is a game by Unfrozen Games. There is also going to be a link to the Steam Store page for the game in the description down below so that you can go and pick it up for yourself. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you 
next time.